The NBA Finals is now set, six days away. Game number one of the 2024 NBA Finals inside TD Garden in Boston between the Celtics and the Mavericks. The Mavs back into the NBA Finals for the first time in more than a decade when they won their only Larry O'Brien trophy in franchise history back in 2011. Second NBA Finals appearance for Boston in the last three NBA seasons. Of course, the Celtics, one of the most decorated franchises in all of professional sports in the hunt for banner number 18. They will have home floor advantage throughout the NBA Finals. What will it mean? for Boston and Dallas. Let's start with the Celtics' perspective, DRS, because as we have shared multiple times, from the very beginning of this season, this was going to be the evaluation piece for Boston. This was going to be how we judged a successful Celtics season. Not getting to the playoffs, not reaching the second round, heck, not even winning the Eastern Conference crown, but getting to the NBA Finals with this core and actually winning a Larry O'Brien trophy. As you will see all throughout, Boston has been booked as a favorite to win the NBA championship on opening night. A co-favorite alongside Milwaukee at plus 380. A co-favorite at plus 175 to win the Eastern Conference as well. And Donnie, by the time we got to February and Milwaukee trailed behind despite a winning record, the dismissal of Adrian Griffin, the hiring of Doc Rivers. The Bucs weren't really on the same peg as the Celtics. Pretty much since the All-Star break, it's been Boston and everybody else in the Eastern Conference and almost the Celtics and everybody else in the entirety of the association. That's what it feels like. And also, you know, having Coach on the talk about the evolution of the Boston Celtics, which really wasn't much of an evolution at all. We thought they were the best team opening up the season, and here they are favored to win the NBA Finals, as they should be. But sometimes you like to be tested here, and that's going to be the issue. We see the Dallas yeah. Mavericks place very good opponent after very good opponent after very good opponent here in the Western Conference playoffs. We haven't seen that here from the Boston Celtics. And quite frankly, it's not their fault. Sometimes things just go your way. and You need a lot of breaks and benefits on your way to a championship run. But we haven't seen that adversity hit them. We haven't seen a team rise up and test them. Well, Donnie, did you see like there was 1-1 in a couple of those series? Yeah, I understand that. But yeah. nobody thought after those 1-1 series in game, series number one and series number two that we were going to see a fifth or a sixth game at that point, which is obviously a fifth game, but not a sixth or seventh yeah. game to get that extended series. I want to see how it plays out. Now, a couple of years ago in New York City running for mayor, there was a campaign that was called the rent is too damn high. When you take a look at the Boston Celtics at minus 220 for the finals, that rent is too damn high here. I know the Celtics are really good, but damn it, they are overpriced continuously here. That 220 shouldn't be that high then. And as we discussed throughout this week, Donnie, after the Celtics wrapped up the Eastern Conference title in only four games against a banged-up Indiana team that did mm -hmm. not have its all-star in Tyrese Halliburton, the line started to trick up even to minus 230, minus 240. And we said, listen, the look-ahead line of the projected NBA Finals matchup before the Conference Finals round between the Celtics and the Mavericks was around this minus 220 price. Even if Dallas has to go to five or six in the Western Conference, conference finals it is going to stay around that number and of course that's where we settle minus 220 for the NBA championship in favor of the Boston Celtics but again they flipped to an odds on favorite by the time we were in the opening round of the NBA playoffs and that's with everybody still in action in the Western Conference, the Nuggets as the favorites, OKC as the top seed, Minnesota, and of course, now the Dallas Mavericks. So let's go to the Mavs, who actually entered the NBA postseason. Third best price in the Western Conference, DRS, to end up winning the title, of which they did. A plus 650 number for Dallas. And that's really where the Mavericks have been on the ascension. A strong closing stretch to the end of the regular season. They disposed the L.A. Clippers in round number one. They got rid of the Oklahoma City Thunder, despite the Thunder being the top seed in the Western Conference in round two. In a gentleman sweep, in the Western Conference Finals. Oh, by the way, just to keep the historic tally going, 156 times now, we have seen a best of seven playoff series in NBA postseason history, have a team hold a 3-0 series lead, all 156. The team that was up 3-0 ended up winning the series. 
Absolutely. And we were talking about that and we don't have to clip that clip of you saying like there's no way they can come back because quite frankly, nobody's ever done it. So it's an easy stance to take, Ben. You won that stance. We don't have to send that to any freezing cold takes. And also after they lost game number four, we're talking about the Dallas Mavericks. I don't think anybody was panicked like, yeah, we're still going to get a seven game series. We were hoping for that for content purposes and betting purposes and have a lot of fun to see that competition on the court. But you were talking in waves of, okay, it's hard to win four games in a row. Dallas couldn't do that. Now we're just expecting the Timberwolves to win four games in a row against a team that just beat them three straight games. We knew that was a little bit far-fetched at this point. But also, when you're moving forward on what we expect from the Dallas Mavericks, here's what's sometimes tough to lay out. Yes, we know Luke is very good and Kyrie are very good. But in order to probably beat the Boston Celtics, which they're going to have a chance to do that, the price points aren't minus 600, minus 700 in the series. Right. But you are going to have to have those Hall of Fame performances by those two guys. Because when you are going to match up these two squads against each other, there's two superstars already on the Boston Celtics. There's two superstars already on the Dallas Mavericks. But if we're looking at those B and C pieces, the Boston Celtics have many more of those than the Dallas Mavericks do. So, which is very enjoyable because if you are the underdog, you need epic performances to win a series or even a few games in that series. So Luka Doncic, he understands the task moving forward. It can't be 17 points, nine rebounds, and six assists. We got to get what we saw last night out of those two superstars if they think they want to win the series. That's what's going to be Mm -hmm. fun to watch you play out, how high these superstars can actually take their games in the biggest moments. And of course, the two superstars for Dallas last year did not gel. They did not reach the postseason. This year, they entered with the seventh best price to win the Western Conference crown. But when they are playing at the level, they displayed in the Western Conference finals, both together on the floor at the same time. It is hard to overlook Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. By the way, Kyrie's return to Boston is going to be a narrative in this series. Of course, he spent two seasons as a member of the Celtics organization in Beantown from 2017 to 2019. Let's just call a spade a spade. Celtics don't like the man very much. Are we going to see some sage as we try to make the good aura bring back inside TD Garden before game number one on Thursday? Who knows, but it's going to be rather ruthless, I would expect, for Kyrie Irving. But not the only reunion, DRS. Kristaps Porzingis spent two and a half seasons with the Dallas Mavericks. Good buddies with Luka Doncic. They reunite here on opposite sides in the NBA Finals. And we haven't seen KP since that opening series against Miami. And by the way, we're taking a look at Kyrie Irving, too. You know, one of the more interesting players over the past 15 years that we've watched and learned from. But at the same time, he's in a yeah, he's in a much different headspace right now, to be honest. You see, is every single time that microphone gets in front of him, he's happy, he's enjoying it, even saying nice things about Boston and basically telling the Boston fans, I wasn't mature enough when I played in Boston. I'm much more mature now. It'll be fun for the competition to go back there. I actually wish it was a little bit different. I wish Kyrie Irving was taking the microphone and basically telling him, Kobe Bryant style. I can't wait to go back and beat down Boston on our way to a championship here. It's a little bit too nice right here. I need this rivalry to get fired up between Kyrie yeah. and the fan base immediately when game number one starts on Thursday night. And just to make this point again, the Dallas Mavericks were only three games above 500 as we got close to the end of February, or at least the beginning of February, my mistake, February 3rd. Dallas won 24 of their final 33 games down the home stretch. And from the all-star break on, the Mavericks really turned things on. Dallas has been playing good basketball, not just in the Western Conference postseason or the Western Conference finals, but really all throughout. Again, Boston has yet to be tested. The Celtics have only played 14 games here in the NBA postseason. They have won 12 of the 14, but they are just 7-7 seven and seven against the spread, and Boston has only covered once. That was game number two against Indiana in their last six playoff games. Not exactly easy for the guys in Beantown now into the NBA Finals.